feature of the service that he was to build. We'll talk about context and things of that sort. This is a little, uh, uh, a little uh, history, personal history, and I'm going to put my own personal context on this. So, uh, a lot of these titles and things are kind of meaningless to, to most folks. One is they're a little dated in terms of time, and the other is uh, I think one picture or a few pictures might help make it uh, clearer. Uh, just a few things here. I, I did uh, graduate from South Carolina. In fact, uh, this is the 50th anniversary of uh, the opening of that school with my wife and I. And, uh, uh, David uh, Rowe and Ruth Rowe, uh, Ruth graduated from there also, and so they're with us this evening. And David was my roommate here at Piper, so it's kind of a special evening for us. Uh, 1962, September 1962, I've been on campus a week or two, uh, when John Kennedy gave this speech. And uh, he basically said, you know, Rice plays Texas in football. You know, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And he said, we choose to go to the moon and do these other things. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And I guess I didn't know at that time, one is I personally wasn't interested in the space program. I, only, I came here to teach school. I came to Pfeiffer because I thought I could get a good education and teach physics and math in high school. And once I got here, I got uh, caught up in it and thought, well, maybe I'd rather be a college professor than a high school teacher. And I went off and got a PhD in physics from the University of Tennessee. And graduated in 1971, and you know you couldn't find a job anywhere. The job market was about as bad as it was here. Certainly couldn't find a job teaching. But the Apollo program was phasing down, and the government couldn't hire civil servants, so they uh, contractor got a low bidder contract, and for ten thousand dollars or thereabouts, I went to work on the Apollo program and worked the last two Apollo flights, Apollo 16, 17. I'll show you that. Uh, the other things along the bottom that I worked with they was the graphic office, NASA, Lockheed Martin, and support forty systems. You know, give you a little bit of insight. So a few pictures. Uh, this is from Apollo 16. And I think all of you know what that is. I did get involved. I was very much involved in uh, the science mission operations, flight planning, particularly for this guy. Uh, there's a suite of instruments that were on the side of the Apollo command module. Uh, remote sensing instruments, X-ray gamma rays, uh, alpha particle detectors, uh, radar sounders, all sorts of things like that. And my job was to, to represent NASA in the interface with the researchers and the scientists who were actually built these instruments and one of the science data out of, and I did the timeline, the time flight planning for those particular missions. Uh, and then uh, eventually NASA headquarters made me an offer, and I wound up doing advanced planning for astrophysics and also working with uh, these uh, what we call suborbital programs, sounding rockets, balloons. Uh, this is a more recent picture of the balloon program. They're actually doing some quite impressive work in Antarctica, flying these balloons around. The wind just blows around in basically a circle. And so you can get a lot of observing time with these huge balloons down there. And uh, doing astronomy from the airplane, that hole in the top of that uh, airplane there actually has an infrared telescope in it. Get up above the atmosphere, above the moisture in the atmosphere. You get some uh, first class science done. Got involved with some satellites. This is actually a, a an artist concept of the solar maximum mission, uh, solar physics. But these are the two that probably got me into the business big time. One on the left is the infrared astronomy satellite. You can see there's a, uh, a gentleman there in a, a, in a clean suit with it. That was a uh, the first all-sky survey, all-sky all survey of the uh, basically looking at the universe in the infrared wavelengths. Very primitive by today's standards of what we can do. And the one on the right is the top of the background floor. Both of these telescopes had big thermos bottles full of superfluid super helium that kept them operating around just a few degrees above, above absolute zero. And uh, the Kelvin range, that's about 270 degrees below uh, zero with uh, freezing. 